is 63 days till the man burns and today we're talking about looking after your skin because skincare on the player is a nightmare and if you have any kind of you know skin problems or skin conditions it's gonna be even harder for you I'm really lucky I don't have like skin problems to deal with my skin is quite resilient to things except player dust so the two main problems you face are the sun, which is just going to try and burn you all the time, and the player dust, which is, you know, it's really, really alkaline, so it's really harsh on your skin. It can make your skin very dry very quickly to the point where, you know, it cracks and your lips are dry and your nose hurts and, oh, it's just horrible. So first up, defeating the evil day star. You will need a really strong sun cream. Even if you're the kind of person that really doesn't burn easily, you will still want to go for an incredibly strong sun cream. You do not want to end up being the burnt man at Burning Man or woman. Make sure you go out and buy a fresh one for Burning Man. A lot of people don't realize that sun cream can actually go off and not work. So it's no good bringing along that one that you've just had like sitting on your shelf since last year. You will want a nice new one. And it's really something that I think you shouldn't skimp on. You know, don't grab that one from the pound shop and just kind of keep your fingers crossed that it's gonna work. Get a reputable one that you know is going to work, even if it is a little bit pricier. And make sure you read the back because it will have instructions on how much sun cream you need to apply to be protected. A lot of people that apply sun cream and still end up getting burnt, it's because they're not actually applying enough of the sun cream. So make sure you know how much of it you're actually supposed to be putting on to get the full protection of it. It's worth getting one that is specifically for your face as well. A lot of sun creams are quite irritating, like if they get in your eyes and stuff. And the ones that are for your face are, you know, designed to not be irritating to your eyes if you start sweating or you get wet and it all gets into your eyes. You're much more likely to apply it all the time if it's not irritating you in some way. Sun cream also needs to be absorbed into the skin before it starts giving you the full protection. So normally you're supposed to apply it about half an hour before you actually go out into the sun. So while you're at Burning Man, it's best to kind of, when you wake up in the morning, get on a nice layer of sun cream before you really do much else. And you know, then by the time you want to be outside in the sun, you're already gonna be protected. And keep topping it up throughout the day. I know that it can be a pain. It's really easy to forget to reapply your sun cream especially as you know time is such a foreign concept at Burning Man you often don't realize that you know you applied your sun cream in the morning and haven't applied any since then and now it's like mid-afternoon so one of the easiest things to do is have like a routine where you apply it so you know maybe every time you eat a meal you reapply your sun cream or every time you go to the port loo you reapply your sun cream obviously do it more if you're not having meals that often or going to the port to lose that much. Just find something it is that you're doing on a fairly regular basis and just tie in applying more sun cream when you do that thing. Obviously make sure that you bring enough for the week as well. If you don't spend that much time out in the sun, then you might not have that good an idea of how much sun cream you're gonna need. If you're suddenly reapplying it to, you know, almost your whole body or maybe your whole body if you're going nude every kind of few hours. Sun cream isn't the only type of protection from the sun. It's, you know, the main one that you should be using all the time. But, you know, bringing along a nice wide brimmed hat that is going to like protect your face from the sun, that will help as well. Although, you know, be warned that the sun can like reflect off the player ground and back into your face. So, you know, you'll still need sun cream. And if you bring along some nice, like thin, loose clothes that you can put on, preferably light colors, then that's gonna help as well. You can just, you know, chuck them on when the sun is really, really hot, especially if you're out in like midday sun, then you'll want something to just be able to, you know, throw over your shoulders so they're not getting burnt and just give your body some protection. If you can rope someone into helping you apply your sun cream as well, that will help because, you know, there's some hard to reach places or some, you know, bits that you're just likely to miss. So having someone else help you out means, you know, your back's gonna get a really nice good coverage and just, you know, all those little areas that you kind of neglect a bit when you apply sun cream, like the backs of your knees, will get covered. If you have any like exposed skin on the top of your head, if you are, you know, a bit balding or if you have like a parting or something, that can get sunburnt as well. You will definitely want a hat and to be applying sun cream to that area. I know it might sound weird to like be applying sun cream if you just have like a parting, but if you have ever had like a sunburnt parting, like you know it's worth it. Next up, defeating the player dust. So because player dust is alkaline, the easiest way to get it off is with something acidic. 
Most people use a mix of vinegar and water. So one part vinegar to three or four parts water. And there's a few different ways to do it. You know, you can have a spritzy bottle that you can just kind of spritz yourself down with. Some people like to put it on like wet wipes. So the wet wipes are like infused with the vinegar and then they can just wipe. Some people like to have, you know, a foot basin that they can fill up with vinegar and water and they can just soak their feet in it. Some people like to use the combination of all of those methods and probably some other ones. So do whatever works best for you, but make sure you focus on your hands and your feet because they tend to be the two spots that get impacted the most with the player dust. Spritzing a wipe with the like vinegar water mix and you know, just rubbing it over your face, that can be quite nice as well because it's just gonna break through all that dirt and make you feel clean for like a couple of minutes. Because you know, if you just use a spritzy bottle, you're probably gonna get it in your eyes and that is not gonna be very nice. If your skin is like starting to crack, then pay some extra attention to getting the dust out of those cracks because, you know, having dust in them is just going to make them much worse. Whatever you do, do not use like a citrus fruit. Don't use like lemon juice or something like that. There's something called margarita dermatitis and it's basically a reaction between the citrus and the sun, which can give you like huge, huge blisters. So I know a lot of people say, you know, using lemons is nicer because they smell better. You don't have to smell like fish and chips. But if you use lemons or citrus or something like that, then you risk having a reaction to it. I'm not sure that anyone's had a reaction to vinegar. So now you've got all the player dust off and you've been covered in something alkaline and covered in something acidic. Your skin is probably feeling a bit sad and dry. My number one choice is coconut oil. I find that with a lot of moisturizers, once I put them on, they like absorb in and then just like kind of come back out and leave you feeling like really greasy and gross. But with coconut oil, you get that kind of gross, greasy feeling in the beginning and then it absorbs in and you can kind of, you know, wipe off any excess. Use whatever works for you, but if you are gonna try something new, if you are gonna use coconut oil and you haven't used it before or you're gonna use a new moisturizer, test it out beforehand, preferably somewhere warm, so that you can just see like how it reacts. And obviously to make sure that it actually does something, it actually works for you and it doesn't have any bad side effects, you know, it's not irritating or anything like that. The easiest time to moisturize is before you go to sleep because then by the time you wake up, all of that moisture is gonna absorb into your skin. But you know, obviously if you use something like coconut oil and you get in your sleeping bag or you put on your PJs or something, that, you know, it's oil, it's gonna get all over whatever it is your skin is touching. So you might wanna bring along some old PJs that you can like slip on so that you're not, you know, getting everything all oily. The same thing can happen with moisturizer as well, but it's usually to a lesser degree. And you know, if it does get on your clothes or your sleeping bag, it's quite easy to wash out compared to oil. Make sure you bring along lots of chapsticks as well. Your lips will probably get dry. The inside of your nose will get dry. You can use coconut oil on them as well. I, you can probably use moisturizer too. But you know, obviously like chapstick or Vaseline, they're gonna work much better. And if you have like problems with chap lips and things, then you probably have like a specific lip balm that you like to use that works for you. Because your hands and feet tend to get affected worse, then, you know, it's a good idea to keep them covered up quite a lot of the time. Depends on how severely the dust affects your skin because for some people it doesn't seem to affect them that much at all. And for other people, you know, they have to wear gloves 24 seven because their hands just get so destroyed by the player dust. You really won't know how it's gonna affect you until you get out there. So you want to be prepared for it. But for your feet, make sure you have some like closed toed boots and bring along lots of socks. You'll probably want to change your socks a bit more frequently because they are gonna be in a hot environment like enclosed in some boots. And you really want to wear boots like most of the time when you're out there. You don't really wanna be wandering around in like flip flops or bare feet. It's nice to have flip flops. So, you know, if you just wanna to run to the port or you're just kind of hanging out in camp, then you know you can stick your flip flops on but for the majority of the time if you are out and about some nice sturdy boots are the way to go it's going to help keep the player dust away from your feet and it's definitely worth bringing gloves for when you're setting up your camp because that's when you know a lot of bad things can happen to your hands like splinters or you know even if nothing specific you don't get any cuts and scrapes and splinters then you know you're just kind of grabbing things and it's just going to be rubbing that player dust into your hand and obviously you're setting up as soon as you get there. So whatever damage you do to your hands at the beginning is just kind of going to get worse as the week goes on. So nice strong gloves for setup are great. And you might want to bring along another pair of gloves that you can just stick on if you are starting to have problems with your hands, if they are starting to crack or hurt you a lot. And the great thing with gloves is, you know, you can smother your hands in hand cream or coconut oil or moisturizer 
and then stick the gloves on and go about your day. So you can really moisturize them as much as you want without having like just greasy hands constantly. A lot of people, even if they don't bring gloves that they wear during the day, they will still bring a pair so that they can do the same thing at night, you know, just smother their hands in whatever moisturizer they're using and pop the gloves on while they sleep. If you have like a skincare routine that you normally do at home, especially if you have some kind of skin problem like maybe acne or psoriasis or eczema or something, then obviously bring along anything that you need to kind of keep those under control. It's nice to bring along some kind of cleanser that you can just, you know, use at the end of the day or maybe a couple of times a week just when you're feeling really grubby and gross and just you know want to have a really good clean but it really depends on your skincare routine and whether you know that's something you feel like would be nice for you you also want to bring something along for your nails because the cuticles can get very dry and they can start to split and break so a lot of people will pop super glue on their cuticles or liquid bandages or something just so that they're protected the whole time they're there if you're going to do that make sure you know you bring along some super glue with you in case you need to reapply it or some spare liquid bandages so that you can reapply them as you need to so i hope this is helpful guys i hope everyone's skin manages to make it through burning man you don't end up burnt or cracked and dry like a lizard and you know after burning man spend a lot of time trying to get that moisture back into your skin and getting everything nice and lovely and glowy and not dry and flaky so if any of the rest of you have any tips or advice or anything about looking after your skin when you're at burning man let us know in the comment section and if any of you see me at burning man this year feel free to come and say hi to me bye guys